Hello and welcome. My name is Mark Benson. I'm an English qualified lawyer and I work for ANSE Law Offices, which is based in Seoul, South Korea. And I help our firm's foreign clients who have legal issues in Korea. So today I want to say a few very brief words about establishing a liaison office in South Korea. Basically uh, what it is, how you go about setting it up and what the consequences are of doing that. So let's uh, take a look at establishing a liaison office. So I guess the first question, the first obvious question is what is a liaison office? Well, if you'd seen my previous video about establishing corporate presence in Korea, um, liaison office is kind of a subspecies of a branch office, so it's not distinct uh, it's not a distinct legal uh, entity from its parent. It's kind of an extension of its parent. Um, and it's also a non-income generating entity. So its main purpose is there for uh, things like marketing, prospecting for, for business, research in the market, etc., etc. But the main uh, Two things to bear in mind are that it's not permitted to generate any income, uh, that it's not a discrete legal entity from the parent company. So, how do you go about establishing a liaison office? Well, that's relatively uh, simple. Uh, the process, basically you report to the foreign exchange bank, as I said in a previous uh, video, Korea has foreign exchange control laws. Uh, the main piece of legislation governing that is the Foreign Exchange Transaction Act. And that means that all money coming into and going out of Korea is monitored by the Bank of Korea. And in practice, that responsibility is delegated to the Foreign Exchange Bank. So the first step is to report um, the, the, the establishment of the liaison office to the uh, Foreign Exchange Bank. The next step is to report the uh, establishments of the entity to the National Tax Service, to, to the tax office. There are various forms that you have to fill in to do that. And uh, to establish the liaison of itself, there's obviously you know relatively significant documentary requirements. But one thing to bear in mind is that the liaison office is not actually registered at the corporate registry. Okay, so some tax implications you need to be aware of. So the liaison office doesn't generate any income, so therefore it's tax exempt. It doesn't pay uh, taxes, but obviously you have to uh, register with the national um, tax service. So foreign, uh, the operating funds are obviously remitted from the head office and uh, local taxes are paid for uh, employees and also it's not registered with VAT so it can't recover any um, uh, input VAT. Okay, dispatched employees. So if you establish a liaison office then the representative may be eligible for a D7 visa. Uh, immigration will look at the application on its merits. It will assess the home company. It will assess the application itself so this is something you need to be aware of it's not automatic it's not guaranteed okay so in conclusion the, the liaison office I guess is the lightest possible touch in terms of um, establishing a corporate presence in Korea it's non income income generating so therefore it's tax exempt and you know, as a consequence, the permissible activities are fairly limited. So marketing, prospective for business, research, etc., etc. So if you want to establish a liaison office, you want to be very clear as to what your um, short, medium and long term objectives are in the career market. OK, and if you want to contact me, here are my contact details. Happy to have a chat anytime. Take care. Thank you very much.